if you're happy with it, does that mean that the 20 schools that you're applying to, will each reviewer at the medical school be happy with it? No, because that's not life. We can't, we can't win every game we play. Ask Dr. Gray pre-med Q&A brought to you by Blueprint MCAT. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm wonderful. What can I help you with? I have a few very pressing questions. Um, All right. So it's currently July. Mm -hmm. Applications opened up um, late May, at least where I am. Yep. And I've taken the MCAT twice now. And both times the score was decent, but it was not good. And then my GPA is not a 4.0. It's all right as well. And I'm hitting a flunk on applications because my personal statement, I feel like maybe I'm too deep. Maybe I'm not deep enough. It's all, I, it's already July. I haven't submitted <laughs> anything. And I'm just, I'm, I feel like I'm hitting that overwhelmed mm -hmm. time period. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how to go about this. I'm like, should I just submit it and say, screw it in a sense, but I just don't know what the best option is. So it sounds like you are very much in this world of imposter syndrome where nothing is good enough, everything is terrible, and, and you have basically frozen in place and haven't submitted an application, Taking the MCAT twice, still haven't, still don't like it. Although you said it's good and it's good, it's just not whatever. Um, why? I, I know why because all the uh, all of you pre meds <laughs> think you have to be perfect to get into med school, um, and I don't know. I don't know how often I can say like you. You don't. You don't have to be perfect. So shooting for that perfection is is just going to to land you where you are now where unfortunately you're now hurting yourself by continuing to doubt yourself i mean i feel like sometimes though maybe it's not just doubt because it's like i know i'm smart enough i'm not i know i have it in me i know i have a solid you know application if i can just finish up the rest of it and get it submitted but at the same time i'm just so i'm nervous of not hearing back or not hearing back with the results that i want or not getting into the well, schools that perfect, i want well perfect 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 scenario don't apply then you'll never hear bad news that is not going to happen of course i'm going to apply i just i don't i know i should not <laughs> I know I shouldn't fear this, but it's also because I, I have some letters of recommendation as well, but I'm still waiting on some people to send me a few others. And I'm going, should I change my personal statement? I've only had two people check that. Is it, is it too deep? Is my MCAT score? Should I take it a third time? And I'm like, it's already July. I, I don't know. I'm just hitting a wall where I can't seem to make any decision. Yeah. Okay. So let's make some decisions together. Okay. Okay. Where do you want to start? I just want to know if I have a decent enough application to just submit it. I feel like I should just, well, I also want to, I don't know. <laughs> no, this, we have one thing, <laughs> no. one thing. Application is lots of things. Let's focus on one thing. Okay. Um, the personal statement. Okay. I feel like I wrote a decent personal statement, but I never know if I should mention certain struggles I never know if something's too dark, if they'll use it against me as a weakness. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how to go about that. Okay. When you leave your house in the morning, you're, you're sitting in your car. Do you know if you're going to get into a car accident? No. Do you still start the car and drive? Yes. Life is inherently full of unknowns. And what you're trying to do right now is trying to know the outcome before you even start. Okay. So is your personal statement good enough? Nobody knows. I think so. Nobody knows. I, nobody nobody knows. Okay. That's the answer. That's nobody true. knows. That's true. The goal of the personal statement in in my mind is telling the story about why you want to be a doctor. If in your heart you have told your story and you think it when someone reads it they'll understand why you want to be a doctor you have done your job. In my mind, you may have written the personal statement completely differently. And that's okay. 
as long as you're happy with it. Now, if you're happy with it, does that mean that the 20 schools that you're applying to, will each reviewer at the medical school be happy with it? No, because that's not life. We can't, we can't win every game we play. Okay, so are you happy with your personal statement? I am. Then I told the truth. Then it's done. So Okay, then your personal statement's good. Okay, what's the next one? That's, okay, MCAT score. MCAT score. Share, share with the world what your MCAT score is. Oh my. Um, so the first time I did very, very bad. I was not ready. I did not study long enough. And I got a 490. Uh, a 490. Okay. It was very bad. Yep. I took it a second time and I did a bit better, but it's still bad. It's a 507. A 507 is not a bad score. This is the the stupid, crazy, pre-med, perfectionist mentality that I need to crush. But it's a it's a not 507 a good... is a good score. It's not fantastic. No, it's not. And I'm like, it's I feel average. Like I need at least a five. It's average, exactly. It's average for matriculants, not matriculants. It's average for uh, appli- applicants. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the right word for applicants, right? Average for everyone taking the MCAT is about a 501 and a half. For students who apply to medical school, the average is about 507. The average for all students matriculating is about a 511 point whatever it is these days. It's not a bad score. It's a good score. It's not fantastic. There is this, okay. this thinking that unless you get a 515 or above, which is like, 95th percentile or something crazy or 80 I think it's 88th percentile maybe that that you're you're not going to get into medical school because the MSAR says that all of these schools the median MCAT is a 517 a 518 and so anything less than that is terrible and it's it's just that's not how we interpret data I'm just trying my best to stand out because I know that they're going to look at every an application and everyone. I'm just an, a number on a page. No, but, they but don't know me. You're, yeah, they don't know you until they do know you. And and yeah, will true. a 507 close some doors for you? It will. It will. But will it keep some doors open? Sure. Well, isn't it the whole purpose is to try to balance your application like let's say you don't you have a decent mcat score you have an excellent gpa that'll help there's but there's, when both there's are no average there's no there's no scale there there's there's no like if you do well here then you can you can have a little flexibility here if you do well over here you have some flexibility like the goal is to be as good as you can i know you the goal is for you to be as good as you can, not to be the best person out of all 60,000 people applying because that's impossible. There is that person, right? After the dust settles and the application cycle is over, there is that one person out there with a 4.0 and 528. I've had them on application renovation. They didn't get into med school. It's not really? just stats. It's everything. Your stats have to be good enough. Is a 507 good enough for some schools? Yes, it is. Can I tell you what schools it is that, that, that it's good enough for? Nope, I can't. So I basically have to jump in the water. You have to jump in the water and see. I just keep telling myself that I can be better. Of course you can I be know- better. So it's like, should I try? Should I keep trying to be better before even applying? Or should I just... I don't know. I don't want to risk having to wait a whole other application cycle. <laughs> so so there there are things subjectively and objectively we can look at, right? Subjectively, we don't know if your personal statement's good enough. That's one of those things where you just have to make a leap. Objectively, we can look at your MCAT score and go, well, we know that the the average for matriculants, the, the students who start medical school, is a 511 point, I think, seven. Yours is four points below that, All right? Can we use that objective data and go, should I retake the MCAT? Well, does a 512 guarantee acceptance versus a, a 507? No, it doesn't. 
right? We don't know what that number is that guarantees acceptance. Guess what? There is no number that guarantees acceptance. This is part of the game of doing the best that you can do. You went from a freaking 490 to a 507. Now, that 507, when when anchored against that 490, schools will go, holy crap, what happened there? Now, most people will assume you took you took the first test without any preparation because some students do that. They're like, oh, I'm a good student. I'm just going to go take the test. And they get a 490. But really, they're, they're 515, 510, 507 students. So at yeah. the end of the day, you have to make the decision for yourself. Do I want to wait another cycle to retake the MCAT when there's no guarantee of me scoring any higher? And there's no guarantee that a higher score is going to get me in versus a 507. Now, I always say a higher score always helps. There's no doubt about it. So I just have to jump. It seems like that's the best option. If I don't get in, I'll just... What's the worst that's going to happen? What's the worst? Honestly, the worst is just I'll fix some things in my application and apply next cycle because I will. I'll keep applying until I get in. And you won't know... If you don't get in until you apply. Well, that answer was a lot different than I expected. <laughs> That's because you assume that everyone is a pessimist, like your own voice in your head is. They're like, Do- the Dr. Gray is, is going to tell me that I'm not good enough. He's going to tell me to wait and I shouldn't apply, and blah, blah, blah. Part of me was kind of expect- not expecting that of you, but my brain kept on telling me that that's the answer I was going to get is that your 507 is bad and you're. You know, just your application is not, I don't know. Your 507 is not bad. It's not fantastic. Right. It's okay. I think it's an improvement significantly. From a 490? Heck yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That should be celebrated. Now the question is, can you score higher? I can. I know I can. Okay. But like you said, like I don't, I don't want to have to wait another year when it's not even guaranteed that a higher score will get me in. I should just apply. And is your app- if it doesn't get me in. Is your application ready to submit? Like it's it's all in AMCAS or wherever it is and you just need to hit yeah. submit and you just haven't done it? Yeah. Go do it. <laughs> okay. Okay. So there, there's a quote that I love. I, I heard it on a podcast and I, I like immediately like pulled over and wrote a note that says, great, great art is never finished. It just stops in interesting places, right? You could that. nitpick your application till the cows come home. You could look at your personal statement a thousand times and go, oh, well, this comma and this period and this word and that word and this structure and that structure and, and the, this paragraph should go above that. You could nitpick it all day long. And you probably have. But at some point, you got to go, the Mona Lisa is done. I'm pretty sure you're right. So, <laughs> thank you. So, submit and know that as soon as you submit, the secondaries are going to start coming. So, be prepared for those. I'm prepared. I'm prepared. Okay. Thank you. For the most part, that was it. I think I was worried about letters of recommendation okay. and that I only have about three. And okay. I can't seem to get any more because I graduated. The last two years of undergrad were during COVID. Mm. I did not make any friendships with professors. So yeah. I really couldn't get anybody. Yeah, that's pretty um, standard. So I was concerned. Yeah. Do you have for a lot of schools the stereotypical two science, one non science? Do you at least have that from pre COVID classes or? Do you not have, I have any professors? Th- they're both science professors. One is microbiology and one is organic chemistry. And Perfect. then I have one that was actually um, a person that I worked with. It was a manager that I had worked with clinically. Okay. So, so I was you, hoping. So you may need to reach out to schools that have requirements for a non-science professor and just say, hey, okay. like COVID didn't, didn't form any bonds. Is it okay if I use a work supervisor or work whatever? And, and just get their sign off so that you make sure you're not wasting money applying to schools that are going to hold you to specific letters. Okay. Yes, I'll, I'll be sure to do that at the very least. Any physician letters? Um, I'm actually working on one that is very possible. Hopefully within the next two weeks at the most, I'll know for sure. Okay. Yeah. 
Try yeah, try to get that. You can submit your application without those letters. You can add letters okay. after. So don't worry about letters coming in right now. You can submit without okay. those. Okay. I should I should be sure to submit it because I feel like the longer I wait, the it's probably not good to wait any longer. Nope. It's it's getting late okay. now. So it's not the end of the world okay. to submit now as we're recording here kind of first week of eh, second week of, J- of July. Yeah. Um get it in. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Anything else? I appreciate it. Mm-mm. All right. Good luck. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs>